good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, it is a, a pleasure to be here, and I thank you, Chairperson Owen, for those kind remarks. And if you wanted to continue uh, saying positive things about me, I'm more than willing to sit down and let you, let you go on. But I do appreciate uh, your kind words, and I want to thank you all for welcoming me here, uh, as well as those people who have traveled with me, uh, welcoming us here today. I am staying with uh, my good friend, Ambassador Rooney, who is uh, truly a, a magnanimous and wonderful person. I'm a New York Giant fan, and uh, in spite of that, he and I have been friends over the years, though his team has consistently been much better than mine in American football. But, uh, and I suspect on the basis of what I've seen the first couple of weeks this year, his team was going to be much better than mine yet again. Um, but uh, Mr. Rooney, I, a pleasure to be here and to have a chance to be with you as well. Uh, I bring greetings from President Obama, who very much enjoyed his uh, visit to this beautiful city just a few months ago. And I'm especially grateful for uh, the opportunity to applaud the work that each of you and the Institute's growing network of international supporters um, are leading to help strengthen the critical ties that bind the United States and Europe. Uh, in this time of unprecedented challenges and evolving global threats, the contributions of organizations like this one and the importance of the discussion forum that you provide, I think, can hardly be over overstated. So on behalf of my colleagues at the United States Department of Justice and across a gov uh, America's government, I'm really grateful for your commitment to the priorities and, more importantly, to the values that our nations share. And I'm proud to stand with you in confronting the challenges that we continue to face. Now, during the two and a half years I've had the privilege of serving as my nation's attorney general, I have frequently had occasion to work hand in hand with and to consult with and learn from uh, many of my counterparts on this side of the Atlantic. Just yesterday, I had the honor of appearing before members of the European Parliament to discuss the steps that we must take to improve law enforcement cooperation and information sharing between the United States uh, and EU member states. The interaction that I had with the members of the parliament was very different from the interaction that I have with members of my Congress. I'm not sure which one was better, um, <laughs> but it was certainly different. Uh, and on Monday, I had the opportunity to address uh, a United Nations symposium convened by the Secretary General to uh, reinforce and to build upon our international efforts to combat terrorism. Now, of course, I've also been fortunate to welcome many of your leaders and elected officials to Washington. And I think together we have extended a tradition of cooperation that stretches back nearly two and a half centuries to the time when America was little more than a grand but very improbable idea. In 1772, before the American colonies had declared uh, their independence from you know, that other nation, uh, members of the Irish Parliament were among those who graciously welcomed the envoy uh, of the American Revolution, Benjamin Franklin, to this continent. And among the Irish people, the burgeoning American nation found a very strong ally. After a meeting with leaders here in Dublin, Franklin reported to his fellow patriots that the Irish were, and I quote, disposed to be friends of America. And he predicted correctly that, and again I quote, by joining our interest with theirs, a more equitable treatment might be obtained for both nations." Unquote. Well, our interests as well as our progress have been joined ever since. Today we can all be encouraged that the ties between the United States and Ireland as well as our bonds with nations across Europe really have never been stronger. But I also know that we cannot and we must not take these relationships for granted. Even though, unlike President Obama, a distant but very proud son of Monegal, I cannot trace my roots to the people of the Emerald Isle, I have been told, but, uh, you know. <laughs> but I think a more extensive search might need to be, <laughs> might need to be done. Um, I certainly recognize, and I am constantly reminded that the structure of the justice system that I am honored to serve and to help lead owes a great deal to the sons and daughters of Aaron. Now, the Irish body of law stretches back more than 700 years. Uh, from this foundation springs much of the basis for the principles that underlie the founding documents of the United States, as well as Ireland's modern republic, a commitment to liberty, to security, to privacy, to opportunity, and ultimately, and most importantly, to justice. 
as sure as our values are shared and as sure as our histories are intertwined, the future progress of our nations is clearly and permanently connected. And today, the responsibility of extending our long legacy of collaboration and of strengthening a partnership that dates back to the 18th century falls squarely on all of our shoulders. Now, as transnational organized criminal networks and cybercrime have transcended national boundaries, so too must we be united in combating these threats. Of course, no aspect of this work is more important or more urgent than ad advancing the global fight against terrorism. Just last week, we observed the 10th anniversary of the September 11th attacks against the United States, a day when nearly 3,000 innocent victims, including six Irish citizens and hundreds of Americans, of Irish Americans, were killed in a stark reminder of the threat that uh, we face and the vulnerabilities that are common to all nations. Even though our efforts to thwart attacks, to investigate potential plots, and to vigorously prosecute terrorists have met with increasing success over the years, the need to remain vigilant and to face these threats together has never been more apparent. And I think we can all be encouraged and proud that the United States and Ireland have established a strong record of cooperation in carrying out this critical work. Almost exactly two years ago, in September of 2009, an American woman who was named as Jamie Pauline Ramirez traveled with her young child to Ireland, intending to join a jihadist training camp and learn to carry out acts of violence. Well, had she been allowed to proceed with her plans, the consequences could well have been deadly. But thanks to a meticulous investigation that was carried out by my colleagues at the United States Department of Justice in close cooperation with Irish law enforcement, uh, she was stopped. She voluntarily returned to the United States to stand trial in federal court for supporting terrorism, and six months ago, she pleaded guilty to her crimes. Now, this is merely one high-profile example of the types of cooperation that really has become commonplace in our efforts to investigate and to prosecute those who would seek to do all of us harm. And it's just one of hundreds of cases in recent years in which America, America's criminal justice system has proven its effectiveness in combating terrorist threats. As we chart our course for the days ahead, uh, I want to assure you that America's commitment to utilizing this system and every other lawful counterterrorism tool at our disposal will continue, as will our dedication to being flexible, pragmatic, and faithful to the rule of law and dedicated to moving in a direction that is guided not by fear, but by fact, by reason, and by our essential and enduring values. As President Obama has acknowledged, and as many of your nations have lamented, in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks, there were times when, in an attempt to respond to terror threats, let us be frank, our government veered off course and failed to live up to our most sacred principles. But as I hope that you all have seen, this administration has worked vigorously and tirelessly to turn the pages on past mistakes and missteps. In fact, among the very first actions that President Obama took two and a half years ago was directing government leaders not only to redouble our focus on preventing and combating terror threats, but also to return to an era in which the costs and benefits of every action taken in the name of national security were carefully weighed. He called us to work in close consultation with our allies to rebuild the bonds of trust that had been frayed and to renew and to reaffirm America's commitment to the rule of law and to the ideals that have strengthened our nation and sustained our most cherished international partnerships. Today, although the struggle has been far more difficult, I think, than anyone might have predicted, and although some of you have not agreed with every decision that this administration has made, I am pleased to report that as a nation, I think we have found our footing once again. And I'm especially proud of the contributions that the Department of Justice has made in fulfilling our paramount responsibility to protect the American people. Now, in meeting this obligation, the department has led with strength and by example. 
even as we have confronted unprecedented and increasingly sophisticated national security threats, we have made historic progress without giving into fear and without compromising our values as Americans. We have made critical revisions to detention and interrogation policies. We have renounced the use of torture and strengthened our ability to bring terrorists to justice in our civilian courts. And despite the internal obstacles in that we have been forced to meet, we are continuing to work and to engage the help of international partners to advance efforts to close the Guantanamo Bay detention facility. Now, this has long been a part of a comprehensive international security plan, and the need for it, I think, has never been greater. I am reminded of this unfortunate fact each morning as I begin my day with a briefing on the most urgent global terror threats, the, the terror threat stream for the past 24 hours. I know that in distant countries and within our own borders in the United States, there are people who, people who are eager to and who are actively plotting to harm the civilians that we serve. Now, like every person in this room, I am determined to defeat our enemies. I know that we can, and I am certain that we will. But victory and security will not come easily, and they won't come at all if we fail to meet national challenges with international solutions, or if we allow differences in perspective, in ideology or methodology to divide us. So let us seize this moment of promise. Let us stand together in common cause, and let us signal to all the world that our joint efforts to ensure security, opportunity, and justice for all will not only continue, they will expand, and ultimately, they will succeed. I look forward to working with you, to hearing from you today, and to all that we will accomplish together. Thank you very much.